Hey, it's Aaron, and today I'm in a 2023 Bronco Sport. Uh, so this isn't just any Bronco Sport, this is the Heritage Edition. So it is the kind of retro 80s um, throwback in the looks. Uh, really, really cool color scheme. I love the wheels on this thing. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'm sh I've already showed you a picture. Um, but this is not about the exterior. There's There'll be a separate video for that. This is an interior walkthrough. Uh, I'm going to talk about what all the buttons and switches are. I don't believe I did this when I got the one of these when they first came out. So it's worth uh, kind of walking through and looking at all of the uh, buttons and switches. If you're familiar with the Ford Edge and a couple of the other uh, Ford crossovers, especially those smaller ones, then you will recognize a lot of the stuff that's in here. So, yeah. Let's get started. We'll start over on the left-hand door uh, from the driver's seat and have a look around. So starting on the left here, uh, we got rear windows, front windows. Here's your, uh, whoops. Here's your uh, back and forth for the side mirrors, which are adjusted with this. And then this locks the, the windows right there. Door handle here physical door lock right here, um, electronic locks right here, and then seat memory on the other side of those. There are three, which is uh, unusual for a car in this price bracket. Uh, first of the vents right there. Those are familiar Ford vents. If you've been in a Ford, you've seen those vents. Uh, they're very adjustable, I like them. Uh, so, and they're simple, like they, they make it obvious, symbol right there shows you what's gonna happen. It's pretty great. Now, lighting, also familiar if, you're, uh, if you've are if you been in Ford. Over here is actually your rear hatch release. Now this is not a self-opening uh, hatch. This is a manual, but this will pop it so that you can lift it. Um, I like the hatch on this because it's both upper and lower. This opens the full hatch. You can also just open the glass from uh, back there. And then lighting right here. So this selects your lights. You can turn them off, markers, automatic, and forced. And then pushing this turns on your, your uh, fog lamps. And then over here is your dimmers for the um, driver information, uh, well, the gauge cluster, and also the infotainment. They both uh, sync together for lighting. Then coming this way oh i should point out if you're not if you haven't seen before that's the latch for the hood ford latches are now similar to some of the europeans um especially the germans like uh, bmw where the door blocks that from being pulled so the door has to be open and then you pull it twice to release rather than just once um that's a safety measure and i believe that ford adopted it after bmw did and for pretty smart reasons. I like that idea. Makes it a lot easier to open that front hood up there. What do they call the hood in Europe? The bonnet for opening the bonnet. <laughs> okay, to the steering wheel Batman over here. Uh, you have mostly cruise control stuff. I really need to cut my nails. Anyway, uh, mostly cruise control stuff. You do have your volume controls down here, including mute right there. And then you have uh, cancel for cruise. This turns the cruise on and off. This sets the distance. This is lane keeping, whether or not you want it on. And then you set and resume, push the button to resume. Set is up or down. And then of course you can raise and lower the uh, speed that your cruise is set to on the right hand side mostly driver information stuff a little bit of info stuff as well uh, so you got both the pickup and hang up buttons for the phone right here telematics i like that word even though it doesn't apply and then uh the back and forth buttons for choosing like songs channels etc and then here is your voice activation which is okay uh this does not have the upper package of Ford's sync. It has that smaller screen uh, with the sync three system. So it's not quite as capable, um, but you know, this has the walk you through the menus, say yes or no for most of the most of the stuff. And it works pretty okay. It's just slow. Uh, 
it, meaning it takes forever to walk through all those menus. Then you have the menu here for the driver information screen, that giant section in the, between those dials right here. You move up and down through that with this, push OK, and you have a back button as well. Then this has paddle shifting because everybody's in Formula One now. And then over here, you have your washer wiper dongle. Uh, so you can see you set the speed in the middle here, so you move this. There's one of these things on both sides like that. And then this little switch right here on the side, you move that up or down to do the rear wiper. And then pull it towards you to squirt the front, push it back to squirt the rear. Yeah, I said that right. And there you go, that's pretty much it. Over here on this side, after the NASCAR buttons, you have this big thing. Uh, this dongle, it looks big because of where I have the camera. It's the same size as the other one, it just looks big. Uh, so this is lighting up and down for your signal turns, the order you should be using them in, uh, back and forth for brights, and then on the edge right here, you can just see that button. That will turn on the uh, parking assist, which is a pretty cool system. Uh, so yeah, you push that and it's not parking assist. I said parking assist, didn't I? Lane keeping assist, sorry. This will hold you in the center of the lane, basically. Um, pretty good system, works pretty okay most of the time. It is mostly camera based, uh, but it works in sync with all of this cruise control stuff. So pretty good stuff. Now, gauge cluster. I can get the whole thing in one shot, that's awesome. So over here you got your rips, ripums, RPMs. Uh, down there you have your water heat for the engine. Over here is your uh, speedometer. Uh, this can be configured so you can swap that. So it's a physical dial, right? On the outside, it's physically there, but all everything inside is actually digital, except for the dial itself. So all of this stuff is digital, all of this stuff is digital. So you can swap that over to KMPH or whatever else you want to use. And then down there, you got your fuel level. Up here, you got some outside and other info. So facing east, 46 degrees, etc. And then fuel economy is the screen we're on right now. Down below is your gearing. Now you can't put this in manual um, if you really, really want to. That's what the pedal shifters are for. Um, I'll show you how to do that later when we get to the gear shift. So this middle screen, if I'm pushing that right there menu button, if I'm pushing that menu button, these are the kind of screens it comes up with. So I can go through and I can do like, here's the display setup. So the display setup sets up what's in this screen. And then going down, I, you can select preset ones. There's the audio, whatever and all kinds of stuff. So there you go, that's kind of where you're at for these screens. Um, yeah, so pretty neat stuff, fairly limited, but still pretty cool, useful. Now, go in this direction. Here's your start stop button for starting the engine. Here's some more of those vents that I talked about and the infotainment. So this infotainment is Ford's uh, Sync 3. It is a small screen, uh, but this is a small vehicle, so that's not actually that big of a knock. Uh, and it's pretty clear, easy to read, fairly easy to understand and use. Uh, most of these buttons will stay there when you're on what this is the like kind of like the main screen. Uh, so if you hit like if if you are wanting like I do, what I did was I turned it off because the audio was on. But you can go through and you can pick like apps. And uh, here's the apps that are on there. There's nav, there's the phone, and so on. So pretty simple and easy. There's not a whole ton of functionality, so this is pretty fist, pretty quick to learn. Uh, there are upgrades for this, but this particular package is on the lower end. But it, this package does include the Bang & Olufsen stereo system. Oh, yeah. Anyway, snip and do it. This here is, uh, this here, this is the uh, controls for that screen. Volume is over here. You can also push it to turn it off. Tuning is over here. You got your Duke's lights right there in the middle. This turns off the auto stop start. So like when you're at a stop sign and stuff and it shuts the engine off, this will disable that. This turns on your camera system. And then this is supposed to mute and it usually does, uh, but not always. Sometimes it just ignores me. 
I don't know why. It's probably this particular vehicle doing that. And then going through, you can see what these are. And then this turns that screen off. So if you don't want to look at it, you shut it off. All the way off or back on. So that's what this button's for. So if uh, like night, like you don't want this distracting you, right? So you just do that. So it's just a clock. Night driving, you're tired of the light in your face. You just turn it all the way off like that. This does not turn off the whole system. So it just turns off that. Your radio is still working, all of that good stuff. So there you go. This is an awesome cubby with a, a little rubberized thing in the bottom of it. So this is a great place to throw uh, like an extra phone, some keys, other stuff that you could just kind of carry around and need to need to stash and then going down you can see the airbag warning there and then this is all climate control stuff so right now it's turned off I use that that's the on and off button and then going through you can see kind of what they are you have auto and this is Ford so there's three levels of auto which means that's how aggressive you want to allow it to be so you can put it on three and that will be the most aggressive it will do its most and then ford uses the mode man uh, very similar to like volvo and some other companies because it's just intuitive that's a dude that's his face you push that must be blowing on your face you, that's that's a dude that's his feet push that must be blowing on his feet easy to understand and then you have your bun warmers on either side here steering wheel heat right here fan control if you want to manually control it right here most of this is pretty self-explanatory when you turn these dials the temperature you're setting it to will show up in the bottom corners of the screen here so pretty easy to understand easy to use down below that you can see this is a wireless charging pad there's two usbs a c and an a there's a 12 volt round plug right there and another spot where you could theoretically get another phone but it would have to be a really small one but if you got friends that have the flip phones and stuff like that they could go right there otherwise that's just where you toss your loose change and your junk over here I'll talk about the shifter last. Let's start with these drink holders. One is slightly higher than the other. So this one's elevated, this one's not. Um, they're both the same depth, but that makes it easier to reach, right? And stuff like that. Now, if you happen to be a like Red Bull or small can drinker, boom, fits right there. How cool is that? Now, let's talk about this shifter. And then this other shifter, there's two of them. So this is your park pruned right park reverse neutral drive but if you rotate it and you're in drive you can push the manual and now it is in manual shifting mode and you use those paddle shifters to do the work so there you go with that this is park brake pull the set push down to release this is your hill hold assist um i like to call it launch control even though that's not really what it is it sounds cooler than hill hold but there you go and then down here is sort of like your ford calls it goat modes but it's, it's your off-road stuff so you have a hill descent right here control that here you have four wheel lock so you're locking four wheel drive making it 50 50 otherwise it is an all-wheel drive system here you can just lock the rear differential here you can turn off traction control and then your drive modes i'll just rotate through them on here and show you as they pop up here so you got normal eco sport slippery um you know bad weather that kind of stuff more whoop, there we go muds and uh ruts i'm just gonna go ahead and say it ford is being pretty optimistic about the capabilities of this little thing it is pretty good uh, it has decent ground clearance um you know for a small vehicle like this but it is not an off-road vehicle i know it says bronco on it but it's not it's a bronco sport it's basically a ford edge with a better body work better with better body work on it uh yeah so don't try to mud bog with this thing. It's it's not going to go well. All right, back to it. So anyway, they were our mud ruts. After that, you got sand, which is dirt roads, stuff like that. Whoops. I take too long to explain them. And then the last one is rock crawl, which is exceedingly optimistic for this vehicle. It is not a rock crawler. Don't take this to Moab, please. You will wreck it if you even get yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know you'll get to moab and it, it drives great on the highway but once you're at moab and you try to go off road you're screwed all right 
Here is the Ford stuff that they always like to put in them. This particular one announces that it's the Heritage Edition Bronco. It is uh, actually a Bronco Sport, completely different vehicle. Ford gets really confusing with that. They're really, really pushing the branding. So you have pretty decent armrest right here. You have half decent amount of storage, a couple of USB-C plugs. Then you have this seating, which is really good. I really like this seating. And yeah, then you have a lot of black on black on black, but at least they went with the kind of taupe colors up there. And you can see the leather color really carries throughout, which is great. So there's the back seats. Uh, two on the outboards is fine. It's adult friendly back there even. You've got pretty good headroom. Uh, middle seat's a chump seat. Lots of cargo space. I'll show you a picture. So this Heritage Edition has a couple other things. There's a sunroof. There's a... Uh, uh, I think that's about it. I'm not showing you like the taco holder and stuff because every car has that now. Um, yeah, for the most part, this is a Ford Edge with a better body. Tiny little uh, two liter four under, under that hood, but it puts out a lot of good power and it puts it out just right for the size of this vehicle. So no complaints at all with that. The all wheel drive system is pretty good. We didn't have terrible weather this week, but I did uh, dirt road it and stuff just to, just to feel it. And uh, it does a really good job. But like I said, there, those drive modes with uh, like mud and, and rock crawling and whatnot. Yeah, that, this is not an off-road beast. Um, and I dare say you cannot modify this to become one. I don't think it's going to work. You could put two inch lift on this and bigger tires and it's still going to be terrible for that kind of stuff. Not what it's made for. Go to the full size Bronco if that's what you're looking for. The Bronco Sport, which I wish Ford had named some other way um, because it is just confusing. A lot of people assume that this is the same as the other one and then they further confuse it by putting those extra drive modes in it for no reason. <sighs> but anyway, the Bronco Sport. It's a great little drive, really good car. I really like the way it gets around town, the way it hauls stuff, way more stuff than you would expect. Um, the little square body design does a lot of good. Downside, fuel economy is not quite as good if you go into like the more aerodynamic Ford Edge uh, or whatever the other little tiny one is. Uh, you'll get way better fuel economy in this, like to the tune of three or four miles per gallon better. Uh, but still, this is a good looking little vehicle, especially with this paint scheme. This is the coolest paint I've seen in a very long time. And I just drove the Toyota for the 4Runner 40th anniversary, which I also thought was awesome for that. But um, it's a nice little, pretty practical car. I'll show you a Monroney. I'm not gonna talk about it. I'll just show it to you. You can pause. Um, yeah, and you get an idea of what this is. So. Great little vehicle. Um, again, Bronco Sport. It is not a full-size Bronco, which is a completely different beast. I should have videos of, I think, at least two of those on my channel, and I think there's three. Uh, so if that's the one you want to look at, then go look at it. But uh, yeah, this is completely different. Um, this is more like the Jeep Renegade, if you want like a size comparison. So there you go. This is a nice little vehicle. Interior is very, very comfy. Um, they did a good job. I have tons of headroom and I have almost this much in the back. You know, you can see that gap. That's a huge gap. Uh, in the back, it's maybe half an inch or so less, um, which is not, <laughs> that's a ton of, somebody that's six foot five would fit in here easy. I'm six foot three and I don't have the seat all the way to the floor. So um, really good job on this. And now I'm just rambling. So it's time to quit. So this, 2023 Ford Bronco Sport in the Heritage Edition. This has been Aaron. Talk to you again soon. Subscribe!